Hello there, I'm Dennis. And in this video, we're going to install Alt Linux. Let me minimize this. We will come back to it. I have it set up in my virtual box. I've given it two cores of my processor, eight, uh, four gigabytes of RAM. I've enabled the EFI. I have turned the video memory all the way up. And I've given it 56.5 gigabytes of virtual hard drive. Let's click start and get started here. All right, I'm going to go right control F. Get in full screen and boot all Linux from the installation. Start EFI shell. Let's see, my mouse do the same thing. No. Boot out Linux live from the Alt workstation. Boot out Linux rescue. Boot others from Alt Linux. Start EFI shell. Start MDK utility. About refined. Manage hidden tags. Shut the computer down, reboot the computer, reboot computer, set up utility. So let me go back here to boot Alt Linux installation from Alt Workstation. This is a Linux operating system that's based in Russia and it's a fork or based on the old Mandrake operating system. I've heard a lot, a lot of good things about. Mandrake. I'm really sorry that I don't get a chance to uh, experience them. Heard a lot of good things about them. Okay, we got some Russian going on. Okay, so here we're going to, right off the bat, we're going to get to choose our language. Tab. They get me up there. Well. There we go. English. Please select the keyboard, which there's no option there. So I'm going to say next. The language is USA. Say next. License agreement. I'll have to read this and I'll share it with you what I think about it after I've read it. Let's see. We must have to tick something here. Yes, I agree. Next. All right, United States is my country. Chicago is the correct time. Hardware time is set to GMT. Current time set automatically. That's cool. Next. Use unpartitioned disk space. Destroy all partitions and then auto partition. Custom install. That way I can be sure of what we're going to get. Okay, next. All right, so our hard drive is here. 56 gigabytes. We are going to make a file system. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. So here I need a not listed. I need a X D four file system. I need a swap. Fat six fat thirty-two. Here we go. Okay, so this one will be boot. And I'm gonna name it EFI. And this is the edit the mount point, show extra options. See what the extra options are. Mount point boot EFI. Nice. Selected that by the flag I just set, I guess. Format before using. Let's do that. Say OK. Not seeing it. The whole thing can't be that. Let me destroy that. <laughs> Start all over. 56 point gigs. We're going to create a partition. All right, here we go. This was the right way. 512 megabytes. Uh, not a Linux file system, but an EFI system partition. We're going to create a volume, show extra options. Why not? This will be formatted to FAT32. OK. Edit mount point, volume label. We're going to name it EFI. We've already looked at the mount point EFI. Oh, that's good. All right, so there it is right there, SDA1. So left click on the free space again, say create partition. This one will be 4096, which is the equivalent of four megabytes. Partition type will be should be one there for swap, but I don't see it. I did see it while ago. Leave it there, go extra options, say OK. Here we go, swap. 
So UUID for swap space, check for bad blocks, nope. Show extra, say okay. Edit mount point, there is none, so we're gonna say okay. This one is swap file system. Left click on the unused space, once again, say create partition. And there's what we got left. I'm gonna divide that close to in half by saying 22 gigs. This will be the Linux file system. Create a volume, show extra options, say okay. This is gonna be the ext4 file system, which that's awesome. Here, the volume label will be root. Create xt3 journal, nope. Check for bad blocks, nope. Show extra options. Mount point will be slash for root, that's correct. Say okay. All right, there's our root partition. Now we've got 30 gigs unused. Create partition, leave the size alone. Extra options. EXT4, that's correct. All right. Check for bad blocks. Nope, this will be home. Show extra options. Mount point slash home. That's pretty smart that it picked that all that up. So there we go. That's our SDA1 for our EFI boot partition, SDA2 for our swap file or swap partition, I'm sorry, SDA3 for root, SDA4 for home, and I'm gonna say next. Apply requested changes, yes, or okay. Okay, nice. Advanced applications, office, looks like it's ticked. Let's see what we got going on there. Libra office, scanning and smart card support. Clam AV for antivirus. If I was doing this on hard drive, I would put that there. Project management, dictionary. Don't really need those, especially in a VM. I'll leave those as default applications there. Here we got Pigeon IM client. I'm gonna undo that and the Thunderbird. Third party app support, let's put that in there. Cloud storage, I'm good on that now. Multimedia, Blender, graphics editing, Audacity. I'm gonna install those anyway, but for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna do that here in the VM. Virtualization, you could go ahead and install that during the install, that's awesome. Under publishing, we have free CAD system. I'm assuming that's a computer-aided diagram or program to do stuff. <laughs> Scribus desktop publishing system, I'm good on that. Show group details. I'll click on that just to the office. It's just going to tell us the same thing. Say next. Alt Workstation is a Russian operating system based on Sisyphus Software Repository, a full software stack from source codes to the end product. Uh, okay, so it's already installed in the base system. I'm going to right control F to get out of full screen. We'll try to keep up with that. That looks like it's almost through. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bring up my web browser, and I was at DistroWatch, and as you know, I, I look for XF, or operating systems that have XFCE, so I clicked on that, and it opened up this, DistroWatch's page for them. It's a Linux operating system, and it's based on Mon Mandrake. It's independent port from Mandrake. It's Russian, and it comes with all of these <laughs> desktops. If you think of it, it's right here. <laughs> Not really, but it's not all of them, but it's all they support, which is quite a few. And uh, XFCE, of course. And it's 67. That's where I picked it up. So instead of clicking here, what I did was I run a Google search, uh, just Alt Linux, punched it in. There was the distro watch, and here's their wiki. But before I did that, I read Alt Linux. Alt Linux is a set of Russian RPM-based operating systems built on top of the Linux kernel and Sisyphus package repository. Alt Linux has been developed effectively by Alt Linux team, developers, community, and Alt Linux LTD. They were first released, or initial release was in 2001. That latest release was July of 2020. They're coming up on their 21st birthday here, or 21, yeah, their, their 20th birthday here. That's quite a while. So then I clicked on the wiki, and this is where you'd you'd be brought to. This this is their homepage, discussion, main page, recent changes about. Click on that just to see. 
current no text so let's go back here their downloads you click on the downloads you select your download i went for the torrent here go back back to their wikipedia alt linux it's a set of russian same thing that distro watch just said version history linux mandrake alt good reading in here telling you their version history mandrake alt linux light compact server terminals quite a bit of stuff regular arch or alt <laughs> linux regular the regular image builds are intended to aid those interested in alt Sis sisyphus and the current state of linux desktop environments at least as packaged there these are not fully not the fully fledged properly tailored distributions but rather a targeted technology so we got the different flavors cinnamon experimental downloads this is where i went while i go program installation now this was a, a really nice read in here they tell you a whole bunch of stuff and explain what they trying to do apt was initially developed to manage installation and removal of programs in the debian gnu linux so they're using the apt apt was initially conceived graphical interface for apt is the synaptic package manager so when we get through here it's still installing we, sh we should have the synaptic package manager included by default and it also gives you the command lines app get update for updating and i'm sure that's for installing packages here you can search for packages by app cache search substring that was what they just looked for there app get install package name just to install a package if you know the name of it that's all there is to it let's see one thing i found interesting app get let's see where is the upgrade the dist upgrades what i'm looking for did it right here it is app get dist upgrade when working with Sisyphus, it is recommended to use the app get dist upgrade command to upgrade the system rather than sudo apt get update or upgrade. Here they want you to run apt get dist upgrade hyphen upgrade, which is a, a common practice. I've seen that in several uh, PC Linux OS is the first one that comes to mind. So quite a bit of information on here. And I'll put this link in the show notes or as, as a title let me minimize this and see what we got here where we're at control f full screen that's the menu in russian here we go that's what i wanted to see how far we are it's system installation that's where we're at now yeah, no way to get to a terminal to change the resolution. That's okay. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to right control F, get out of full screen, and I'm going to pause the video, and I will be back when this is either through or almost through. Okay, so I'm back, and the installation says 100%. Let's see how long it just sits here. I'm not seeing any activity. I do see the hard drive light on my computer, so something's happening. Here we go. Alt Workstation is a Russian operating system based on Sisyphus software repository, a full software stack from source codes to the end product. Installing software ACPI 1.7 hyphen alt one. A turnkey workplace for government employees and managers to perform their daily tasks. So we're this up here says 5 slash 12. I'm assuming that means 5 out of 12 system installations. They've come back way too early. All right, let me right control F to get out of full screen. Let's slide that right there. Yeah, we're just getting a slideshow here. Convenient desktop, familiar to majority of the users. Go back to the thing I'm going to use for a reference here. 
this is the program installation un uninstallation package management of alt linux graphical interface for the advanced packaging tool here is synaptic i'm taking it that means synaptic will be installed by default uh, it's telling you to app git allows to install into the system packages that require other still uninstalled ones so you go app git update i was reading here where it says it recommends you do that all the time anyway or especially if it's been a while since you've updated and this is basically like syncing the databases app git update packaging package installation and upgrading installation of packages with apt is done using the following commands so it App get install, whatever your package name is. App get install. Removable is app get remove at the package name. Updating all the installed packages. To upgrade all the installed packages, the up, app get upgrade command is used. Upgrade. It allows to update those only the packages that are, have newer versions and the repositories listed in etsy app source list no packages are removed from the system when this is done however a change in package names or dependency does occur for instance renaming package etc to resolve that problem though the distribution wide upgrade mode can be used app get dist hyphen upgrade when the entire distribution is upgraded which is what this command will do. APT or the application packaging tool performs a comparison of the system with the repository, removes obsolete packages, and installs newer versions of packages present in the system and checks instances of renamed packages or change dependencies among older or newer versions of program. If you want to do just your software, sudo app get up. Update. Yep, update. Right here, sudo app get update. Search for packages, sudo app search. Sudo app install package name. But if you want to do the entire system, then that re that requires an app get dist upgrade. Let's see where we're at here. Five of twelve still installing additional software. All right, well I guess I'm gonna pause the video once again. Thought it was closer. I may even cut this part out. <laughs> okay, so I see we got another option here. I'm gonna write Control F to get back in full screen. Seven of twelve. It says bootloader setup. EFI recommended. The drop down arrow here though, you get EFI clear in VRAM, disable right in VRAM for removable, de removable, removable de device, and then here hard drive SATA, which is my hard drive. EFI, as correctly said, it's going to get EFI. So we're going to set a password. SC set reset password. All right, there we go. Next, set reset password. Never had a password, so we're setting it. Bootloader set up. I could see where that would be a little confusing right there, though. Typically, you choose your well under a BIOS legacy mode, you would always choose your just your hard drive not a partition but under EFI you do install the bootloader on the partition itself in this case it would be SDA1 I did click that next looks like it's going to take a minute to do that I'll come back when I have another option right control F okay so no sooner than I went into pause I got another option here. We're going to set up the computer name. It's calling it by, by default host 15. I'm going to leave it just like that. 
network adapter, Intel, Gigabyte Ethernet controller, etc. Use DHCP. Okay, next. Set up password for system admin. I thought that's what I just did. Because I don't have a user. Generate automatically. No, I don't want to do that. All right. Asking for my username. No comment. I could say root. Or let's call myself admin. See what it says. Password. And we're not going to auto, auto log in because I'd like to see what window manager. Name only small Latin letters, no capitals. All right. Let's see what that does. Next. System user. You can learn more about the features of this product at our official site, www. Base Alt. Are you? I'm going to click on that and see if it'll open. You can start working right now, creating and editing office documents, browsing internet sites, processing audio and images, and a lot of other activities. Look through the menu to find many new useful programs. Uh, right now, I don't have a menu. Online documentation is docs.org, altlinux.org. Uh, same, I believe, I believe those are all the same. I shouldn't have clicked on that. All right, I'm going to say finished. In theory, it should just reboot, I guess. And this is UEFI modes. I shouldn't have to do anything with the ISO that I actually could and probably will remove it on its own. It's about 50-50. Some do and some don't. The ones that don't remove it, they don't really mount it. You would have to mount it manually. Running post install script. Automatic root boot after 17 seconds. I wonder if I hit enter, will it go ahead and do it? Absolutely. Okay. Advanced options for the alt. Enter a username. Your password. I just wanted to see advanced options. <laughs> I don't know what that did. I can see down at the bottom here, that's in Russian. Although this is all in English, so I'm going to go ahead and press enter there. This is our first boot. That's certainly different. The progress bar. Very nice. I like blue. Don't hang up right there, though. Let's go. Any operating system, the very first time it comes on, takes a little longer than it normally would, normally will. There's our mouse. Okay, admin. I'm going to sign in other, under. Let's see. And my password. And we have guest additions. Maybe the wallpaper will straighten itself out here. It should. There it went. <laughs> Very nice. I am t I'm totally blown away. This, this is, looks a lot better than what I thought it was. I didn't really know what to expect. Very nice. Is this the whisker menu on top of all that? It sure is. Oh, and they're on a system monitor by default. Oh, got an extra category here. Tab. That's kind of neat. Processes on resources. It says we're using 603 megabytes of the four gigabytes that I allotted. I like that. This is real nice. Let's see what we got down here first. We got our calendar and our date. Let's see. Copy time, preferences. Let's see what we got here. Show the date. Show this is a whole new take. 12 hour format. We want, that's what we want, or I want. Change it to AM. That's cool. Weather, temperature, not in Celsius, but Fahrenheit for me. Wind speed. Meters per second, kilometers per hour, MPH work. We'll say, let's see what time setting says. Well, you can manually adjust your time as well. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Here, that should be the internet. It is. This is clip it, it looks like. 
There are updates for our system, clipboard manager, volume. See what preferences does here. Sound effects, no sounds, default, theme, enable window and button sounds, why not? Hardware, input, picking up my microphone, doesn't look like it, but we are, in, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Left and right, applications, there's none. Huh. All right. Figure display settings. I'm happy with what it, it has there. This is the US updates. This is the updates here. Let's see what it says. The following packages will be replaced Firefox, Kenit, Utils, LibTS. The following packages will be installed. The following packages will be upgraded. Wow, quite a bit. I'm going to just exit out of that if it'll let me. Let's go look at their menu on their desktop where I'm going to right click. Reorganize desktop by name, keep aligned. I'm going to take that off, change the background. <laughs> that looks like the mate background right there, or a mate background. That's pretty nice. I've seen that somewhere, I think. Stars, mate, no water. Storm. I don't want to see another storm. Not for a long time. <laughs> Blue. Yeah, I like that one, I guess. I have seen that one somewhere before. You got your fonts tab here. Interface. Show icons and menus. Which ones do you want? Which ones don't you want? Uh, your theming. We'll leave it on custom, but you could change it, I'm sure. Yep. Close that out, go back to their menu, right click on it, preferences. This whole thing is different. It, the, the functions are the same, but how you get to them and what they're called are different. That's, that's pretty neat. Something else to learn. Search engines, DuckDuckGo, Google, Wikipedia, Dictionary and Computer, Favorite, Places, System. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Right click on my panel, see what we get. Background, solid color. All right. This plays the ski. Here's we got places, computer, home folder, network, desktop, trash, package manager. Let's open that up and see what it should be. Synaptic. It's not. It's the software store. I'm not going to uh, install anything off of there. We have updates. So to be fair, you need, really need to do the updates first. Software catalog is being downloaded. That's going to go according to how fast your internet speed is. Sometimes this one just stops, <laughs> slows down, and then, then stops. You never know. There it goes. Control center. Okay, so this is like the Mate. Is this the Mate desktop? Let's see. What is there an about? About me, about workstation. I thought I was getting the XFCE desktop. Okay, there's the software center. About's opening up. Mozilla Firefox. That take us to a website. Huh. Illustration, yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Startup application, Synaptic Package Manager. Password for the root account. Close out of that. Refreshing. Quick inter introduction as super user. Show the... If you tick that you'll see this again if you're interested and want to read it tick that so you can see it again you might know it may be something in here you want to reread like choose the action from the context menu of the package 
click on the status icon to open a menu that contains all actions. So you might want to reread that. But this is just your typical GUI right here for package installation. You just click on search and type in your software that you know. If it's available, it'll show up here. Because I haven't done these updates, it may not show up here. It may not even be available, I don't know. But I, I would know more if I did the updates and then check. Also, you may be able, may be able to install it by terminal. CDF-H, SDA3 was 22 gigs. We got 7.1 gigabytes. And same thing here, almost, uh, she's in 649. I think that's what system monitor said. Very nice. This is a nice system. This might be worthy of looking around and seeing what all you can do in here. It's a, a pretty neat edit on their menu here. So you, let's go to, just go to the all category. We got, no, let's don't. Let's go to accessories. We got a character map. Can I make that bigger? Uh-oh. That's a negative. Can't make your menu bigger. But not, at least not this way anyway. Character map. Insert special characters into documents. In Grandpa Archive Manager. The Mate Calendar. Mate Font Viewer. Mate Search Tool. Password and Keys. Pluma. Yeah, this is Mate. Recoil. Take Screenshot. Is that MC Edit? Back to graphics now. Now remember, I could have, remember I could have installed s some other software during the installation, but I didn't. So here we got LibreOffice Draw. I think we probably have the full suite. I Mate Image Viewer, Image Magic Display, Mate Color Selection, Xane Image Scanning for your scanners, GIMP Image Reader, Scan Pages. Huh, under internet, I got Mozilla. I unticked the Thunderbird and Pigeon, I believe. Desktop sharing. Okay, under Office, we do have the full Office Libre Suite, Libre Office Suite, Document Viewer, Edit Your Diagrams, Sound and Video. We got Sound, Cheese for your webcam or camera, SM Tube, Simple Screen Recorder. VLC Media Player, System Tools, APT Indicator, About Alt Workstation, we just opened that up, CPUX, that's a nice program right there, tell you a whole lot about your motherboard, I don't know what it'll tell me here, give it my password, that's if you want to change anything, if you just run it as a regular user, you couldn't change anything, but uh, here, it'll tell you, this tells you all kind of stuff about your motherboard, your system, your CPU, caches for your RAM. Yep, that's real nice. I have that on my system. System tools, Kaja, file browser, Gparted, HTOP. But that's come with HTOP. Log file viewer, Mate disk usage analyzer, Mate system monitor, which I like this Mate system monitor. Mate terminal. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. That's what we opened up a while ago. Rosa image viewer, software. That's uh, the software store again. Deconf editor. Under administration, we got Grub customizer, print settings, RPM install, system management center. Preferences about me. That's probably mugshot. It doesn't say it, but it sure looks like it. Here you could change that app from admin to another name if you wanted. Change your password. Okay, under preferences. It's neat. It stays. Uh, the last category I used, it was highlighted here. Bluetooth by default. Desktop sharing. Displays. File management. HP. Is installed by default. Keyboard, keyboard shortcut, shortcuts, LCD test, the LCD screen quality, main menu, change which applications are showing, screen saver, sound, startup applications, synaptic package manager, user password, and Windows. Main menu. Let's see what 
Oh, that's Libre Menu. Menu Libre? <laughs> can never remember and never get it straight. And I sure hope if one of the developers listens to that or hears me, he forgives me. Yeah, this is where you edit your menu, customize this menu just about any way you want it. Okay, I'm going to exit out of that. H-Types reporting we're using 564 megabytes of the 4 gigabytes that I allocated. No swap, of course. CPUs is down nominal, minimal. I'm going to close that out. This is a Alt Linux, a Russian-based installation or a Russian-based operating system based or forked off of Mandrake, which no longer exists. That's too bad because this is a fork of Mandrake. I really would have liked to have seen Mandrake. See, we didn't see in favorites here. Okay, so you can add whatever you want to in here. We could take this out if you wanted to, like displays. If you right click, probably say remove from the favorites yet. Yep, very nice. This is a good, good looking system. It deserves a try. <laughs> Even though it is from Russia, I mean, this is 2021. Ain't nothing they're going to see on my machine that they hadn't wanted to see somewhere else already. Anybody, not just Russia, anybody. <laughs> I mean, what can you do? You can do what you can do, but they already know what they want to know. Okay, well, my name's Dennis. I thank you very much for watching, and I'm going to close out of this video and say goodbye. I'm going to right control F, get out of full screen, and shut down, which they call it quit. I'm going to shut down. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on another video. Bye.